Here's another gardening tip. Plan, plan, plan before you plant, plant, plant. The tiny seeds and tiny plants we put in our garden in the spring are so easy to get too close together. We have to think ahead how big the plants will get. We also need to keep in mind the quantities of things we're going to grow, the fertility needs of the plants, how long they'll be in the garden, and the fact that some plants like to grow next to each other and don't like to grow next to other plants. There's lots of things to think about as we plan our gardens. Luckily, we have all winter long to plan, plan, plan before we plant, plant, plant. In the spring garden, we plant three crops together at the same time, which stay in the ground until December. These are cut and come again crops, celery, Swiss chard, and parsley, which will stay in the garden until December. Over here, we have the beet patch, which will be gone by July, and I'll plow that and replant it. Another typical threesome on our garden is squash, beans, and cucumbers. These three crops are planted at the same time, about the 1st of May, and they stay in the ground for about the same time, usually about 90 days. By having them together, it's handy for me because when I take them out, all of this land here will be ready for the next crop. Cucumbers and beans are companion plants. They like to grow next to each other. I alternate the cucumbers with a row of beans. So as the cucumbers vine, they're not climbing into another row of cucumbers, but they're climbing underneath the beans. They'll like the shade of the beans to help make their cucumbers. The beans will get harvested a few times, and then they'll be gone, and the cucumbers will be here. But as all three of these crops start to peter out, I won't try to rescue them. I only want to harvest from them for four to six weeks when their crops are at their prime peak condition. Once they start to deteriorate, I mow them down and plant something else here because I've planted another crop somewhere else. I like to plant sweet potatoes and peppers in the same field because they're planted around the same time, the beginning of June, and they're harvested around the same time, right before the first killing frost. They both stay in the ground until the first frost. But sweet potatoes by then will have sprawled for eight or 10 feet. So I plant a row of shelly beans in between the sweet potatoes and the pepper patch. That way I can harvest these October beans sometime in August before the sweet potatoes take them over. And after they're harvested, it's not gonna bother me that the, the beans here are being covered by sweet potatoes because I've already harvested them. If I had planted the peppers here, then in a few months, these sweet potato vines will engulf them. Here's a case of poor garden planting. I harvested a seed crop of kale and then quickly planted five rows of butternut squash. I really should have waited a week, let all that extra kale seed sprout, and then mechanically got rid of it before I planted. But I got in a hurry, you know how it is as a gardener, you get in a hurry, and I wanted to get my butternuts out. So now I have a lot of kale as weeds. I don't want to have a kale crop here because it's too early in the season and it's hot and it'll get all buggy and it just won't be very good. Besides, I want to plant kale about a month from now and I'd rather not have a bunch of diseases and bugs around that this kale will bring in because it's growing at the wrong time of year for a kale crop. So here we have kale as a weed in the butternut field. Quantity is another factor to consider when planning your garden. Here's another mistake. I planted way too much lettuce and all this has bolted before I could get rid of it. Lettuce is another crop that we plant successively. So this first planting is gone, but here is a second planting that's just ready to eat right now. But it won't be long before it's bolting like the other patch. 
but I planned for that. I have these two beds of lettuce in between three rows of tomatoes. In the past, I've planted six rows of tomatoes together, and it ends up being this impenetrable jungle of tomatoes and cages, and it's a mess. But this way, we'll mow the lettuce down after it's bolted, and I'll have this handy path that I can drive down to harvest the tomatoes, which require uh, harvesting every few days. Onions are a crop that doesn't require fresh fertility. I plowed this field that had a heavily composted potato crop last year in the fall so that I would be able to get the onions out in mid-March. But I didn't have to compost them because they're good at using the leftover compost from the potato crop. On the other hand, corn requires fresh fertility. So this corn patch got a heavy dose to compost this spring. We have two plans for extending the sweet corn harvest. I plant a 75 day variety. At the same time, I plant a 90 day variety. So we have sweet corn harvest for a month. We also plant at different intervals. So here we have a newly emerging sweet corn crop. While over here, we have a crop that was planted six weeks earlier. Now we don't want to get excited and sow all of our seeds at once. We want to hold some back for a second and third planting. Here we have some cucumbers and beans and summer squash that will come on a little bit later than the first planting so that when the first planting starts to peter out, I can just mow it and plant something else, get rid of all those bugs and diseases and have fresh pickings from a fresh crop. During the winter, I fill notebooks upon notebooks with all of my garden plans knowing full well that plans change. It's somehow comforting to know that I'll make more mistakes next year and every year, but it's through these mistakes that new knowledge is gained and we'll use this new knowledge then when we plan next year's garden before we plant it.